In the year 1968, a film called 2001 A Space Odyssey was released to the masses across the globe. Critically acclaimed and dubbed a cult classic, this is what people thought the future would be. It is one of the few movies that will change you, even though you will barely understand it. I'm going to review it, not on its artistic merit, or its ahead-of-time visual effects, or its genre-defining storyline. No, I'm going to judge it based off the technology it depicts, because I truly know nothing about any of that other stuff. In 2001 A Space Odyssey begins with a 20 minute sequence of apes jumping around in this prehistoric desert biome. A large monolith appears, showing all of the apes how to use bones to kill each other. Now obviously there's no computers here, so we can fast forward two and a half million years by way of an ape launching a bone into orbit using sheer arm strength alone. We find a government scientist, Dr. Haywood Floyd, on his way to the moon aboard Space Station 5, a hotel spaceship. There are many things here that show the creators of this film made decisions based on the possible future reality, the first being the ship itself. A large spinning spacecraft like Space Station 5 is often depicted in science fiction films because it's one of the only ways to create artificial gravity in space. As the spacecraft spins, it accelerates the occupants towards the walls where they can stand, with the exact amount of gravity felt by a person being directly related to the size of the ship and the speed at which it's spinning. Space Station 5 is said in various online sources to spin at just the right speed to simulate the moon's gravity. Another key aspect of this ship is the voice recognition system that Dr. Floyd uses to gain access at the beginning of his trip, like some sort of airport check-in. Through a series of questions, the computer in the wall is able to identify Dr. Floyd using only audio, which is a technology I think we'll be seeing a lot more of here in the future as AI and speech detection models continue to get better and better. We then see that Dr. Floyd uses Skype to tell his daughter he won't be able to make her birthday party only one day in advance. Which I find pretty annoying, as that's probably something he should have told her a mere one day ago when he was on Earth. But what do I know? I'm not a father, and I know absolutely nothing about childhood trauma. Nonetheless, being able to predict voice recognition technology and video messaging in the year 1968 is pretty spot on. Upon arriving at the moon, Dr. Floyd is shuttled to a base that is far away from the space fort he landed at to report findings from a dig site in secrecy. It is revealed that there has been an identical black monolith discovered buried on the moon, hinting at the possibility of extraterrestrial life from long ago. As the astronauts investigating the monolith try to take a picture with it, the monolith emits an extremely high-pitched tone, seemingly putting all of the astronauts in pain. Humans, having learned absolutely nothing from this in 18 months, embark on an expeditionary journey to Jupiter to further investigate the possibility of extraterrestrial life. The deep space ship contains five astronauts, two that are awake, Dave and Frank, and then three that are in hibernation as save supplies on the far journeys. This mission is a beautiful depiction of future space travel. Hibernating astronauts, rotational gravity, and the ship's control panel containing screens and futuristic to plays. Hell, that looks like chess.com. This is Clark and Kubrick's view of what the year 2001 would look like, and in my honest opinion, they weren't very far off. Sure, we aren't sending astronauts to Jupiter this very moment 20 years later, but many agencies have plans to send people to Mars in the next 15 years. Numerous agencies are doing research on deep space hibernation to save resources like food and water on these sorts of journeys. Dragon, SpaceX's primary astronaut transport ship that has been doing missions to the International Space Station since 2012, is controlled by a touchscreen panel. 2001 A Space Odyssey was released before we even put humans on the moon, and in my opinion, it perfectly blends science fiction with very plausible technological advancements. And there's one more thing that I think this movie got right in regards to technology. ChatGPT is in the walls. I'm afraid. Discovery 1, the ship taking the crew to Jupiter, comes with a highly advanced feature, sometimes touted as the sixth crewman, HAL 9000. HAL 9000 is essentially wired up to the entire ship, giving it the ability to monitor everything and report on it to the crew, somewhat like a modern computer dashboard. The main difference is that HAL is able to communicate via natural language dynamically, much like modern large language models. As opposed to staring at computer screens and crunching numbers themselves, this gives the astronauts the ability to just ask questions of the computer and gain an intelligent, always correct answer. Uh, until it's not, of course. On their way to Jupiter, HAL identifies a problem with the communication system required to keep contact with Earth. Upon removal and consulting with astronauts on Earth, the astronauts believe that HAL has made a mistake. HAL assures them that that's impossible, as HAL 9000 units have never made a mistake since they've been created. Suspicious of the mistake, Frank and Dave decide to possibly turn off the computer in secret. However, HAL, reading their lips, doesn't like that. 
Hal's only job is to complete the mission, and this entire time he's been the only one that knows the real reason they're traveling to Jupiter. Alien life is more than likely in the Jupiter system. Hal was instructed by his creator to keep this secret from the crew as it may compromise the mission if they knew the real reason they were traveling to Jupiter. In an effort to keep the information secret from the crew without lying to them, and to also protect himself from being shut down, Hal begins to kill the crew. First, he kills Frank when he is on EVA returning the communication system to the outside of the ship. Then, when Dave attempts to rescue the ill-fated Frank, Hal kills the three sleeping crew members by sabotaging the life support systems. Dave, in an act of desperation, gains re-entry to the ship through the emergency airlock, eventually deactivating Hal, saving his own life, and becoming the sole crew member on Discovery 1. Of course, sentience in modern artificial intelligence models is worrisome, and that seems to be what is depicted here in 2001 A Space Odyssey. Compared to modern times, I think that we will see a lot of technology like Hal 9000 here in the future without the sentience and the need to kill humans. Artificial intelligence is increasingly being integrated with hardware to perform more and more generic tasks, and large language models ache into what would likely power how will become more and more prominent in that space to ease the parsing of complex data into simpler terms for humans. Now, as much as many people would like to think sentience is here right now, mostly that one guy from Google, many scientists would say we are very far away from that technology in modern large language models. I don't think that the creators of 2001 A Space Odyssey thought that computers would be sentient in the year 2001, but I also don't think that they could have ever predicted how spot on they would be in depicting the first large language models like ChatGPT. HAL 9000 was so confident about everything and could never be wrong, much like how modern ChatGPT acts. No 9000 computer has ever made a mistake or distorted information. Whether or not this was intended will never be determined. However, there's a reason that many people compare the AI of today to HAL. After Dave regains his composure, he continues the mission to Jupiter, finding another monolith orbiting the planet. Upon leaving the ship to investigate an EVA pod, Dave is sucked into a colorful vortex and eventually finds himself in a neoclassical bedroom. He is seen getting older and older until another monolith appears at the end of his bed, presumably dying, then turning into a giant fetus orbiting Earth. And as just a mere software engineer trying to review this film based off of technology alone, I have no f***ing idea what to say about that. There is no doubt in my mind that 2001 A Space Odyssey is a 10 out of 10, even though I'm vastly underqualified to say that. A lot of the computer technology depicted in this film is actually spot on for 2023. Video messaging software, as well as voice recognition technology, are both key parts of our society. On the other hand, a lot of the spacecraft in this film, while perfectly plausible, just aren't being built by society right now. Some companies are claiming to build space hotels by the time you're dead though, so keep your eyes out. In regards to deep space exploration, while it would take a lot of resources and is arguably useless in the realm of current human space goals, we could send people to Jupiter without deep space hibernation. And most importantly, 2001 A Space Odyssey directly predicted the possibility of Elon Musk installing ChatGPT in Starship, minus the sentience aspect. In my honest opinion, this film did an excellent job at portraying real futuristic technology in a completely science fiction film. 10 out of 10.